socialite on trial for killing her former husband with a car bomb at his country club. Prosecutors are arguing that Pamela Phillips was out for money, and ABC's Ryan Owens is covering the case from the courthouse in Tucson. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning to you, George. It took this case almost two decades to get here to court. But for anyone who likes a sensational trial, complete with sex, money, and murder, this one was worth the wait. It has it all. Is she a socialite, a sociopath, or both? 56-year-old Pamela Phillips on trial for the murder of her ex-husband, high-flying commercial real estate developer Gary Triano. Prosecutors say she wanted his $2 million life insurance policy to keep up her lavish lifestyle after their divorce. Ms. Phillips was looking to marry rich. No. Hugh Bancroft took the stand Tuesday. His family once owned the majority stake in the Wall Street Journal. He testified about vacationing with Phillips and loaning her hundreds of thousands after the divorce. Pamela was dating some very wealthy men after she divorced Gary. Isn't that true? Yes. Prosecutors say Phillips's greed led her to pay a hitman, her one-time boyfriend Ron Young, to plant a pipe bomb in her ex-hubby's car at this Arizona country club back in 1996. Gary Triano was killed in the explosion just after finishing a round of golf with his friend. His head was slumped over. His uh, uh, right arm was in hand, were gone. Authorities say Phillips became a mother on the run, living it up in Aspen, until she was arrested at this luxury European hotel in 2009. She's pleaded not guilty, and her attorney says her ex had lots of enemies. Is Gary Triano lived on the edge. He borrowed a lot of money from all sorts of people, many people who maybe were connected with organized crime. The hitman in this case is already serving life in prison. If convicted, his one-time girlfriend may just join him there. George. Okay, Ryan, thanks. Let's talk about this with ABC's Chief Legal Affairs anchor Dan Abrams and prosecutors zeroing in on this insurance policy. That's right. They're calling witnesses right now to say she was in dire financial straits, but most importantly, that the one thing she wasn't going to do when she was suffering financially was not pay the premiums on that insurance policy. For an ex-husband. That's right. They're divorced and they want to call witnesses to say she was borrowing money, she was making sure that those premiums were paid off. They say that's the motive, then the other key to the case becomes linking her to Young, her uh, alleged boyfriend. Taking a long time to build this case. This happened 20 years ago. So what's the defense strategy in this? Well, it, the defense strategy is in, broadly to impose reasonable doubt uh, in this case. But what they want to do is they want to say, look at other possible suspects here. This is a guy who a lot of people were after. This is a guy who was involved in a lot of lawsuits, owed a lot of people money, had a lot of enemies. The defense saying that's the place to look. So in some ways they want to figuratively put him on trial, which means she doesn't take the stand? I don't think there's a chance she takes the stand in this case. I think there's too much at risk for her. There's too much for her to explain. They want to just say reasonable doubt, and most importantly, they've got something specific with that reasonable doubt, which is look at all of these other people who might have been uh, possible suspects here. Look at all these other people who might have wanted him dead. Uh, you know, not an easy defense. And even though these are tough questions for her, uh, all the evidence circumstantial. That's right. Oh, well, circumstantial. And remember, she's not the one who actually put the bomb there. The, the allegation is that she hired someone to do it. But under the law, if they find her guilty, she's just as guilty as the person.